Hey, it's the Home Medic. Thank you for, for getting one of my tests. I want to provide this video for you because there's, uh, there's a lot of ways to do it right. Well, there's one way to do it right, and there's a lot of ways to screw it up. So I want to just kind of take you step by step for, for doing this radon test right. Make sure that you're comfortable knowing what you're doing and, and maximize your chances of success. Radon is a colorless, odorless, radioactive gas. Now it's a gas like oxygen and nitrogen. Uranium is, uh, you could say, a parent of, of radon. And so it goes uranium and radium, and then it goes down through radon and then some other metals. But the difference is that uranium and radium, for example, they're metals. They're not going to move from, from the exterior of the house inside where they can damage you. Radon, on the other hand, being a gas like oxygen, uh, it can move from its point of origin somewhere outside the house and move into your basement. You need to be looking in the lowest livable living space. So for example, if you get a crawl space, you don't want to be putting this test in, in there because unless you're living in the crawl space, and if you are, you've got other problems. Um, so what I want you to do is you, you take a look in your lowest living space somewhere in the basement and you say, okay, I'm going to sample the air in this, uh, in this basement location. Now it's going to be, you're going to want to try and find something that's roughly three feet away from the wall and three feet away from the floor in that living space. Assuming that this room is, is the room that we want to place the, the radon test into, you know, we've got some opportunities here. Um, as you look back here, you've got, you've got this space here. Now obviously this is not three feet away from, from the wall, but it does have the advantage that the radon test kit, if we put it here, is less likely to be, to be disturbed by children. So that's an advantage. Otherwise, you know, a place like the top of this chair, yeah, that's three feet away from the wall on the floor. It's great if you know that the area is not going to be bothered. If it is, probably better off going with something like this. Alternatively, if you just follow me around uh, over to this side, you know, we've got a little desk here, and, uh, you know, you can move a few things around, and if you were to put the radon test kit about right there, perhaps less likely to be disturbed. Okay, the purpose of this radon sample is to basically come to an equilibrium with what's going on inside your house. Uh, there's nothing hazardous about this, it just basically has charcoal inside here, and that uh, charcoal basically just measures whatever you have in your house, so not to worry about uh, any hazards here or anything radioactive. You don't want to leave this from three to seven days. I recommend three. Uh, leaving it for longer doesn't, doesn't add to the accuracy at all. So what you're going to do, you're going to put this in the, uh, in the location. But before you do that, you see how this, this uh, envelope is kind of skinny. You're going to want to open this up. And I've provided this sponge here, so you just shove this in here. This sponge opens the envelope. Now you're going to want to make sure that when you um, <clears throat> when the test is done, you're going to want to remove this sponge. Don't shove it in, or that's going to destroy the test. So three to seven days. Now, here's another way to screw up the test. Um, if you've got a lot of windows that are permanently open during the test, you're going to be sampling the air that comes through those windows. So you're better off having the windows in the area closed during that time. Doesn't mean you can't go in and out of your house, just don't leave the door open when you leave. At the beginning of the test, you need to fill out most of this here. Uh, you want to put your name, the address, your city, state, and zip, and your email. Now make sure that you write your email in very carefully, because um, if they can't read your email, then they're kind of not going to send it to you. Now, moving down, you're going to want to put the date and the time that you placed the, uh, the test so they know how long it was there. So let's say that you placed it on the 4th of the month at uh, 9 a.m. You'll want to mark that. Now, moving down here, you've got, uh, you have to write in whether, whether the, you know, what the temperature was. 70 degrees is usually the default. 
Um, it needs to be in the basement as we talked about. Crawl space vents closed, yes, and um, if, you, if you have a crawl space vent, well, um, these, these answers are kind of self-explanatory. Now this one can trip you up. Um, they're asking what kind of test you did. Now if you circle real estate, they're going to invalidate the test because they're going to want two samples. If you just want to use this one, write in first time. That's what you need to get started on the test. Now, at the end of the test, when you pick it up and you're ready to send it, now you've got to come in <clears throat> and, uh, and mark the date and time again. So, if we started on the 4th at 9 o'clock, let's say we're finishing on the 8th at uh, maybe 3 p.m., now the lab has the information that they need so that uh, you can have a successful result. Another thing that's important is to is this number right here. Now you see this number is 6308638. This is the only sample that has that number. Um, the one that you have will have a different number. If, if everything else goes bad, you can get on to the lab's web page and type this number in and they will tell you what that uh, result is. You want to make sure that you write that down. Okay, now let's talk about getting this thing shipped off. You've got this sponge here in the bottom. There's a lot of uh, my customers that will shove this thing all the way in and then try to seal this. Guess what? It doesn't work. That sponge is going to break uh, the seal and then the, the test will be invalidated. Make sure you get this sponge out, you can throw it away. Again, there's nothing hazardous about it. Now, if you seal the sample like this, again, the result is going to be invalidated because this charcoal inside has the radon, and that's where that radon needs to stay. So, what we've got here is a little white tape that we're gonna to wanna to take off And that exposes a sticky interior surface. Seal that up. Uh, then you've got this hook here that you can use for uh, part of the sampling. Uh, whether you use that or not, at this point in time it's ready to go. You can take that off. You could just drop this in the mail. You don't want to do that. Uh, mail has a way of taking forever and if it takes too long to get this, real, this uh, sample to the lab, then once again it's invalidated. So what you're going to want to do is put this inside a priority uh, mailer. You can get those at uh, Postal Service and send it to this address um, in a faster style. Of course, you can use UPS or FedEx or whatever you prefer. Uh, it just needs to get there quickly. Okay, one last segment, and this is, this is a very quick overview of how to screw this test up. One of them is to not remove this sponge. Another one is to not seal the container. Another one is to send it slow boat. Uh, you really don't want to do any of the above. You want to make sure that you get this number on the top left of the sample, and you want to make sure that your email is legible. If you get all those things right, you'll probably have a successful test.